Alright, are we recording? Okay. So, hello everyone. Um, this is the uh, first video on my channel, and I'll get into everything in a minute. I just want to structure how I'm going to create these videos. So, this is the first video right here. Clearing things up about threshold training. It's sort of an intro, but not really. Um, second video will be how to apply threshold training for yourself. Third video will be a uh, Q&A session if we have any questions. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. But uh, this is my uh, basic plan so far. Alright, anyways, let's just get straight into this. Right, so, threshold training. This is the first episode by Adam Judson, which is me. Who am I? Right? I mean, the great thing about the internet is that we can all talk about things. But the bad thing is that you can get people who don't know anything about what they're talking about to talk about things com that they completely don't know. So I'm here to say my credentials. These over here, these, is there like a laser I can use? Let me... Yeah, here we go. This is nice. Yeah, here we go. These are all my national rankings, okay? This is my 2 mile, or my 3200. These, this is my 1k, and this is my mile. Uh, so, and this is from indoor. I didn't run outdoor season. But, you know, here are all my uh, PRs in the 5k. This is my PR in the 5k. Um, and I've been self-coaching myself on and off for, I'd say, about a year's worth. And I've gone through the whole phases, you know, you start out with the no, no clue what you're doing. And then slowly you kind of figure things out. Um, eventually to the point where, you know, you've reached a level of mastery. And I'm not saying that I've reached a level of mastery or even close, but I have learned a lot of things. Um, this channel is going to be brutally honest, okay? I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to waste your time. And lastly, I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to sell a training plan, course, or coaching plan. Why? Because... This is the information guys, that people are going to make you pay for. I do not want to make you pay for this, okay? Jeez, if I talk any longer, I'm going to have a have to take high blood pressure medication because this is, it gets me so fired up, but... Okay, let's get into it. What is threshold training? So, right off the bat, if you can't answer this question then you need to go research yourself because there is already an abundance of information about threshold training. Um, go on Marius Bakken's website. Go listen. There's a great podcast it's called Conversations About Running. Listen to Victor Smangs. Listen to Seaman Hollahaugen. You know, th listen to all those Um and read all that information about threshold training. But basically, without going into it too much, because if you want to really go into it, go online and read. Threshold training is endurance training, is an endurance training philosophy where the athlete trains around... Actually, I'll make it completely simple. The athlete trains to increase the body's ability at clearing lactate. How do they do this? They do it through training near their body's aerobic and anaerobic thresholds. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go and learn about what the anaerobic and aerobic thresholds are, and then learn about the basics of threshold training. But that is the basics. So who uses it? Who uses it, right? This Okay, we know the training method, that's great, but who actually uses it? Jakob Ingebrigts did. Uh, two-mile world record holder, you know, this guy is great, 
Um, he's he's just a beast. He's beating Kenyans, and he lives in Norway. Obviously, he goes up to train, but that's besides the point. Christian Blumenfeld, another Norwegian athlete, won the Olympics in the triathlon. Abdali Urahadi, this guy is, I think, U20 10K record holder. Andreas Halversten, he's the uh, world record holder in the 3K for his age group. On Athletics Club, uh, pretty self-explanatory, Yair Nagus, Oliver Hoare, all those guys. NAU, and I just want to say something, most colleges, I believe, are doing, you know, threshold training. Why do I say that? Um, I've heard, uh, you know, things from, like, people like Yasin Abdallah, who say they, most of their workouts are threshold workouts and stuff. But, NAU has been extremely vocal about their usage of threshold training. You have the Halle Haugen family. That's, if you don't know, that's this kid. This kid is, like, 12 years old or something, and he runs, like, 33 minutes in the 10K. So this, so you got this kid using this training method that's faster than me and you, probably. I don't know what your PR is, but he's definitely faster than me. And he has an older brother who runs 13, like, he runs, like, 1320s in the 5K. And his grandfather was went to the Olympics in the 5K and ran, like, I don't know what he ran, but he ran, like, 13, 13 somethings. Basically, any... Oops, sorry, guys. Basically, any endurance athlete that lives in Norway has been using this, but it is starting, it is starting to spread out um, into other places. But the thing is, when it spreads out, people are starting to do it wrong, and that's what I'm worried. So, threshold training is not the holy grail training method, guys. Okay? You will not get magically faster after doing two months of this. You won't. You probably will not get faster at all. Or, if, well, if you're doing it correctly, you're going to get faster, but you're not going to get so much faster as if you were just doing another training plan, another base training plan. It takes time. For this stuff to pay off. Just it takes lots and lots of time. This is one I, I wanna say this is one of the only training philosophies where it's impossible what I'm gonna be brutally honest, guys. Okay? It is impossible to get it correct without equipment. I'm gonna say for all of you listening, one in one in 5,000 of you are going to get it correct if you just go out and run. The only way you're going to get this correct is if you've lived in Kenya your whole life and you've trained with the Kenyan guys. Okay, I'm not going to go into the depths of why that is, but, but basically, at altitude, if you live at altitude your whole life, you have a much better feeling for paces and where your aerobic threshold and anaerobic threshold are. And those guys really teach you the feeling of those faces. That's the only time you're going to get it. Now, I know you're, there's going to be some people that say, well, you know, I'm going to be able to get it. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? I could, I definitely can't get it. I'm sure Jakob Ingebrigtsen couldn't get it either if he tried to do it without it when he first started. It is impossible to get it correct without the necessary equipment. If you don't have a lactate meter and you want to do threshold and you're not going to get a lactate meter, man, just do like tempo running. Just do some other training plan where it's to use tempo running. Maybe Jack Daniels does tempo running. You can use Sealer. I don't know. Just any other guy. They all work, guys. That's what I'm trying to get at. If it was the Holy Grail, why do other coaches still have athletes just as good? As athletes using threshold training, right? Jake Whiteman beat Jakob in the 1500, uh, like, a, a couple years back. And he, he, Do you think he's doing threshold training? I mean, he's from Great Britain. Maybe he's doing threshold training now, but I don't believe he was doing threshold training before. Alright? You have people from Kenya, great athletes, 
they are using Renato Canova, right? Americans using Jack Daniels. You know, you have all these things. Threshold training is just another training method, guys. It's not going to get you fast, magically. And it's extremely hard to do without the equipment and without the proper guidance, which I'm going to try and give you. But it, it's very hard because I'm not actually 1v1 coaching you. So, what can I say? If you do not want to do threshold training now, you can use any training method, guys. The only thing you have to do is you just have to find a training program which, you know, you can stick closely to and you can be consistent with. If you guys start doing threshold training, but you absolutely hate it, it's very boring. It's not a fun training method. You're not going to be doing fast workouts. It's just a bunch of just medium-paced running and easy-paced running. If you don't like that, you're not going to be consistent with it, guys. And if you're not, if you can't stick to it and be consistent with it, you're not going to improve. Even if you say, oh, I'm doing threshold training, you're not going to improve if you're not consistent. Find a training program that you can be consistent with and train with that, okay? So, threshold training is not the holy grail. It won't get you fast. You can't do it without equipment. And... If you don't want to do it, there's plenty of other training programs that mimic threshold training very closely, actually, with tempo running. Tempo running is very close to threshold, I would say. Tempo running, true tempo, whatever. I, 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 it doesn't matter. But you have to find something that works for you. All of, them, all of them for the average person will work. It's just a matter of which one you like the most, okay? So... Now that we have that clear, I'm not going to go into how really how to train threshold very deeply. But I'll kind of jump over how they train threshold. So they have a very scientific approach to training. They're measuring lactate levels within the blood using a lactate meter. But, you know, it's really called threshold training, but it should be called sub-threshold training. Now, why is that? Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. But anyways, the goal is, like I said, to push the aerobic and anaerobic threshold upwards so we can run with less lactate at any given pace. So, on the right here, this is actually my personal lactate test that I did myself. I'm very proud of it. Well, th so what can you see? This is my resting lactate. This is lactate... Um... Uh, at different paces, right? So as we go more this way, the paces increase, right? So at first you could see a decrease, then suddenly a jump up, and then you can see at this point, we kind of start this, uh, or actually kind of like in like one of these points, we kind of start this exponential move up. See that? We kind of start this parabola. Whereas here we're kind of like just flat, even going down. We're going down here. But it's mostly just flat. Here we start that exponential move up. The place where we start the exponential move up, that's the aerobic threshold. And then I want to say the place where you see like the second incursion, I don't really know the word, but the place where it kind of jumps up higher. That's, I, I would say, you know, you have these four and then you have this one way up here. This is kind of like the, uh, uh, your anaerobic threshold. So what is the goal? The goal is to push your aerobic threshold, which for me, I, I'd say is about like right here, or here, I don't know. Your goal is to push that this way, this way, okay? You want to push it to the right. That basically means you, you can run at higher paces with the same amount of lactate as before. So right here, let's see, I was like at 8 miles per hour. I'm going to say my lactate was about 1. Maybe it was 1.1, 1 .1, I don't remember. It was probably about 1. The goal of threshold training is to be able to push it over time so that soon maybe I can run 8.1 miles an hour at 1 lactate. 1 millimole of lactate. Millimole is just the unit that they use. 
So you're just pushing it over here. You know, instead of here running 10 miles per hour being at like 4.1 millimole lactate, maybe I'm at 10.2 miles per hour, 4.1 millimole lactate. That's the goal of the training. Run faster at the same lactate. How do we do that? We do that through training the body to clear the lactate. Now, how do we do this? We do this through, I, I want to say it's called sub-threshold training. You find this intensity wherever, you know, if you want to train anaerobic threshold, you find this intensity and you go slightly below it. You go maybe right on the curve. I'd say you'd be about right here. Okay? Why? Because if you go past this area, are you, you're not able to really clear lactate. I'm not going to go into the science, but basically past your anaerobic threshold, you can't clear this lactate. And you're trying to train your body to clear the lactate. So why are you training up here? We're training right below it. So we're training to tell our body to clear the lactate. Same with the aerobic. We're, we're training the body to clear the lactate. So we got to go slightly below so that the body can successfully clear the lactate. It's not very fast-paced running, guys. Uh, my training is... Uh, I can run a 452 mile. My training is... My anaerobic thresholds are no faster than 6 minute per mile pace. And that's if I'm doing a workout like 20 by 400. Okay, where was I? Basically, you're training at sub-threshold. You're training at sub-threshold, guys. So, now that we know that, what tools do they use? Because we said very scientific approach, they measure lactate levels within the blood, right? How do we get it? Right? Lactate meter. This is my personal lactate meter, guys. This is on a threshold workout. You can see 1.9 millimole. That's right below my personal aerobic threshold. That's perfect. You must use one. If you don't use one, give, give up threshold training, guys. I've tried to tell people, you know, you can do it without a meter, but I'm, I'm here to say, guys. You have to use one. You, you just have to. In the real world, in the lab, right? You might be able to get away with heart rate. But in the real world, you can't use heart rate. Heart rate is all relative. Because every day you wake up, what happened last night? You don't have the same resting heart rate every night. Maybe if you're tired, or maybe if you're fatigued, maybe your resting heart rate is higher right? Maybe depending on the weather, if it's really hot, your heart rate will spike, right? You can't use heart rate in the real world. It'll only work in the lab because the lab is very controlled, right? Everything is controlled in the lab. In the real world, nothing is controlled, all right? So you have to use one of these. This actually tells you how much lactate is in your blood, right? So it's not a metric where it's like, like, okay, let's say, I'm going to make something up. Let's say you have lactate. This is the formula for lactate, right? Lactate equals heart rate plus oxygen amount plus, plus blood pumping ability plus what you ate for breakfast. Heart rate is only one of the things in the equation. Lactate is what the formula of that equation is solving for. So lactate is the most pure measurement. Lactate never lies, guys. Lactate will never lie. If you don't, if you don't want to get one, you're done. You can't do it without one, guys, in all honesty. I've tried to tell people you can, but you can't. I, well, I'm not trying to be rude when I tell them they can, because I really want, I really want to have them try and do threshold. It's, you know, I, just experiment. But the more I think about it, the more I try and explain it to people without a lactate meter, it's just, it's just really, really difficult. Okay? Um, but basically, I went over this. It measures the lactate in the blood to see if you're training at the right intensity. Alright? 
So, what did we kind of go over today? It was a very short, but... Many great athletes use threshold training, okay? We went over that. It's impossible to do without the proper equipment, guys. If, if you want... If you don't... If you can't do threshold because you don't have the equipment... There are plenty of philosophies and programs that are just as good for an average runner like you and me. They, there might be ones that are actually better for an average runner like you and me. There probably is. I'm going to say Jack Daniels is probably better or just as good as Threshold. Okay? Um. Anyways, that's kind of it. Next episode, how, how to structure Threshold training plan for yourself. Okay, so this is kind of what, you know, if you got a coach, right, if you got, if you want to align, you spend money on one of those coaches, this is kind of what they would teach you. I'm going to teach it to you without coaching you. Any questions, leave a comment, DM me on Insta, this is my Instagram. And yeah, that's it. So have a nice day and uh, see you later.